KG5 Ion here. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to set up the Wires X unit to your DR1X repeater. And if you look here, we've got the repeater all set up, basically ready to rock and roll. We've got the Wires X unit out of the box. We have the ferrite beads on each end of the 10 pin connector. And it's not a bad idea if you wanted to put it on each end of the USB cable, which I will be doing later on after the video. Um, helps with uh, reducing interference into the unit. So anyways, uh, so what I've got here is I've got the 10 pin connector connected into where it says radio one. And I've got the USB cable plugged in to the HRI uh, 200 unit. Then over here on the back side of your Yaesu repeater, you're gonna go ahead and plug your 10 pin connector in just like that. Now it's all connected, and all you have left now is hooking up the H or the USB cable. But the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to download the software. Now, after doing a little bit of researching, here go to products. First, you go to yesu.com, go to products, go to WiresX internet linking, and click on the HRI 200, then click on files. And here's where you're going to see the files that you need. Below that, it's just uh, manuals and stuff like that. But over here, you're going to have the actual software. If you look to the right, if it has KB, that usually means that it's just an information pamphlet. Uh, but if it's got MB, those are definitely megabytes of data. Um, so what we're going to do is, for this repeater, it's going to take the 1.3 version of the WiresX software, okay? Um, it doesn't work with the 1.22. 1.22 will throw you in a loop. You won't even know what's going on. You think you've got everything right and perfect. Don't do this. <laughs> I spent hours trying to figure this out and finally got it figured out with a couple conversations with uh, some people from Yesu. Don't install 1.22. Uh, that's for another purpose, uh, and I haven't even gotten to that part, but for what we're doing, you're going to just do the 1.3. So see the second one where it says megabytes 32.96? Click on that, okay? It's going to uh, ask you to save it. Just go ahead and save it. If you have a specific folder that you like to save stuff in, by all means. And... I've already got this saved and ready to rock and roll because I've already been using it. I just uninstalled the software so I could show you guys how it works. So now you've got the software downloaded. Okay, we're going to go ahead and open up the uh, folder where all my downloads are. So I'm just going to click on the folder here. This pops up. Go to downloads. And here we go. So WX1300. EN, that's the one we want. No, I apologize. <laughs> that's not the one you want. It's going to be this one, the HRI-200 version. I don't know why it's saying that. Sorry, disregard. You want this right here, okay? That's it. Okay, so... You're looking for the folder that says WX1300EN. Sorry, I got thrown off by that other piece there. So, once you've got this downloaded, okay, then you're going to go ahead and set up the WiresX unit. Now, typically, um, you can choose 32 and 64 bit, but typically what happens is the unit will automatically choose. I just let it run and choose its own version of the... Uh, setup that you have of your windows so if it's windows or linux or whatever you're running and it's running 32 or 64 bit then you can choose specifically to be honest with you it doesn't do there's not enough performance gain out of the 32 or 64 uh 64 bit version that's going to help a lot so let's go ahead and set this up at the normal setup just hit next i accept Next, next, all the boring stuff, install. Let that run, hit finish. Now, we can close this and close all of our tabs so we have nothing open. 
Now you've got the software sitting on your desktop here. Sorry about the glare. Double click on the software, let it open up. As you notice, this box doesn't have anything in there, okay? We'll not be able to detect, okay, that's fine because I haven't even plugged it in yet. I'm using a mouse right now. So, I'll go ahead and just type in the uh, DTMF node and, and room number, you know, your information that you've been given by Yesu. So, uh, right here it's 33470 for me. And then I'm also going to do the room ID number, which is just the number up from that. I don't know if it's the same for everybody. Then you hit ID entry. But before I do that, I'm going to check my ports. So you go to port check. All mine show OK. That's because what I've done is I remoted into my router. Now you have to log into your router. OK. Let me pull up the Internet Explorer here. You remote into your router. And one way to find out what your router IP address is, is you come down here now. Windows 10 and Windows 7 is basically the same thing as far as being able to get to the right place. It's just a little different layout in different areas, and I'll show you that. So right here on the bottom of the taskbar, you come over, you right click, and you say, and you're right clicking over the Wi-Fi or the internet connection. Then you say open network and sharing settings. Windows 10 looks like this. Windows 7 is different. But the goal is to get to the, basically the um, adapters, okay? So on Windows, uh, Windows 7, you're going to have change adapter settings on the top left. On Windows 10, you actually have to click on where it says Wi-Fi. Then you have to go over to where it says, uh, right here, change adapter options. Once you click on that, then you can get to the network card that you're going to work with. This is a Bluetooth. This is the wireless card. There's also going to be one that says LAN or local area network. That's if you have it hardwired with a network uh, cable. Here, since we're doing Wi-Fi, I'm just going to right-click on it. I'm going to go to Properties. Or actually, I'm going to go to Status. And it's going to tell me under Details what my current IP address is and my DNS settings. So if I find my gateway right here, 192.168.1.1, that's my standard setup. That allows me to get into the... Uh, modem. You can keep this window open, just don't close it all the way because we're going to work with that in a minute. Come back out here and you're going to go type in that IP address 192.168.1.1 and hit enter. And that's going to allow you into the router, okay? Then if you know your router's uh, password, you type that in, okay? Once you get into your router, then you can go into and configure the uh, port forwarding because that's what you have to do. You have to forward the ports in order to be able to get any communication whatsoever. So over here, I'm going over to uh, security. And over here where it says apps and gaming, you're going to see single port forwarding and port range forwarding. I'm going to do port range forwarding because there's a range of IP addresses that I'm going to work with. Notice how I've already got it in there, but I'm going to show you how, how it looks. So when you hit the add button, right here, add a new port range, you type in the ports 46100, and we're going all the way up to 46122. The protocol is UDP. The uh, device IP address, which is this IP address of this tablet which is over here. So if you click on details, that's the IP address. We need to statically assign that, but for right now, we'll just go ahead and use this 1.130. Put that in there, hit apply. Okay. Then you also need to open up one more port. Okay. That's under security. 
you're going to see where it says apps and gaming, single port forwarding, same thing. And it's TCP for that protocol, but 46190, okay? And that's for remote operations in case you want to remotely operate your WiresX unit. WiresX 46190, in, uh, external, internal 46190, TCP, IP address 192.168.1.130, enabled, save, then apply and OK. Okay. Once you've done that, now let's go ahead and statically assign this. So if you're still back in this box, you click on properties, you go to IPv Internet Protocol version 4, double click on that, and say use the following IP address. You click on that, type in that IP address that you just set it to in the modem, which is what this is already set to. And the reason I do that is so that I know that that IP address is available because you can conflict with other IP addresses unless you know your network. Then you go to preferred DNS. Always try to use the router's DNS settings if that's the uh, unit that's actually providing the IP addresses, DHCP and stuff like that. So you hit OK once you're done. I'm just going to hit cancel because I've already done all that. I'm going to close all that. Then you do a port check. So to get to that, if you're on this screen right here, you go to port check, start, get a little lightning bolts, and everything should say OK. Then you just hit close. Now you type in your ID and your pass, your other ID, and then you hit ID entry, and nothing's going to connect because I don't have the wires X unit plugged in. So now I'm going to go ahead and unplug my mouse. And since I've only got one USB port, I'm going to grab the USB cable, plug that in, and I'm going to go ahead and hit ID entry. Oh, there it goes. And there it is, done. So now it detected it. Double click, it'll come back up. I might actually have to do that again because I, I should have done it the other way around. But it doesn't matter either way. ID entry, bam, okay, done. So now it's all set up. This screen pops up right here. This is where you're going to add in some details like uh, comments, you know, hey, welcome to the um, NCCARC link, you know, or something like that. You know, location settings, um, you know, I've got that written down. So you can Google your area and you can look at the uh, degree, minute and seconds of where you live and whether it's northeast or west. Or you can read the GPS data and show the position data. Then in here, where it says round QSO room settings, you can, you know, input some more details there as well. Um, then you hit OK. All right. Now, now, once you've done that, you see you've got a green light on the wires X. You've got it plugged into the back of the repeater. You've got your wires all hooked up for antennas. You got your USBs. You got this thing going. It's starting to populate rooms. All this stuff is starting to magically start to come together, okay? Now, um, I showed earlier how to get this into wires X mode. You just go ahead and turn this unit on. Hear a little squelch from my, uh, there you go, see it says wires X. And, if we give it a second, nothing's gonna happen. That's because we need to actually configure this unit and you get this little pop-up right quick real quick that says a connected transceiver was changed from simplex type to hit o then you hit okay now it's going to restart your wires x this also should reboot too sometimes it does anyways restart the wires x and if you notice call sign and everything's in there now you go to field all right, sorry, Phil. You go to file, transceiver, and there we go. See, it's in digital mode. I have previous, previously set these frequencies in here, just as a test. So you can set your frequencies, your transmit and your receive, narrow, uh, you know, all the other little details, power output, 
And over here, I didn't really mess with any of this stuff. I just kind of left it as is. Uh, remote, you know, reverse if that's how you're operating. And, you know, you can dive more into details on that. Then you just hit OK. And it'll reboot. There it goes. It's rebooting. Came up. Done. Now, once this is uh, populating, down here what's really cool is you'll get some more links of rooms that are, you know, in bigger groups like Japan and United States and uh, Italy and a bunch of other countries like that. And you can, you can actually start chatting with those guys. So you just tap on a room, you know. One thing that I figured out is where it says ACT, if you tap on that a couple times to where you go from largest to smallest, you'll see rooms that have like just tons of stuff in there of connections. And those are the ones I chose. So for an example, uh, I can't see it on here on any of these, but I'm just going to click on room. And uh, since my mouse isn't working, it's, it's not going to let me right click and say connect but you can come up here at the top go to connect and connect okay and I think I clicked on something oops connect connect there it goes that's it you're connected I'm gonna close I'm also gonna disconnect that's it so you're out now so that's the basic setup of the dr1x with the tablet and the wires x unit and that should take care of that uh, if you guys have any questions or anything please let me know and oh just so you know here's what I was talking about see how it says ACT and it's 71 and all that the American link if I click on oh, well, let's click on that one right there connect to that and if you notice where it says on air and it's green that means somebody's actually talking now I don't have the my other digital radio up here to listen to that but if you're out there and you're on your uh, ham radio in a vehicle or whatever you got a digital radio you can actually listen to those conversations or on the back of this if you plug in some headphones you can actually listen to what they're saying too so let me know if you guys need any help. Hopefully this helps you guys. KG5IN73s.